Right. First of all, congratulations to you, sir, on securing a third term in office. Just tell us, how does it feel right now after winning this election? Boy, I feel on top of the world. It's um, a very joyous occasion, um, very humbling, because not many persons get the opportunity to lead their country for a third consecutive five-year term. And it's a sweet victory in the light of all the challenges which I've had to face, including the economic difficulties arising from the meltdown internationally in the economic and financial um, regimes. I also have had particular challenges because, as you are aware, when you when you are wrong for ten years, as I've been serving as Prime Minister, there's some voters who just want to change. And in a in a in a in a situation where governments are changing around you, uh, you you and you're able to prevent yourself going that way, it, it's a it's a major accomplishment. What would you say, sir, was one of the main things that helped you to stay on course, taking into consideration what you just said, that people usually want change after a while? I, I, I think that because we have a, a very good record across the whole range of public policies and a good party organization and a good bundle of candidates and good leadership, and, and we are in communion with the people and, and the people owned the, the campaign. You know, I, I love them for this. They owned it. Now they must own their government. Do you think, after losing the referendum last year, were you in any way worried at all about the results of this election? Nah, I wasn't worried about that. I mean, the, the yes vote got 22, under 22,000 votes. We got over 32,000 votes this time. So, I mean, it, it tells you that there were over 10,000 people who voted no, or who did not vote, came to us and voted us. Do you think, sir, your victory teaches the Caribbean at this time? Just simply to be honest and true to the people always. Don't allow the scurrilities and, and innuendos and defamation uh, and bitterness to get hold of you. Let those who want to play in the currency of those things do so. But you just keep focus on the people's business. Great. My final question to you, sir. What would be your major priority at this time? I know the airport, the construction of a new then, airport. Well, we are going to complete the Argyle International Airport. We also have a number of things doing and further uplifting the education revolution, including the rollout of 30,000 laptops, one for each primary, secondary, and post-secondary student. Um, we have an important set of programs to implement in health, including what we call the lives to live uh, for the mentally and physically challenged. And generally, of course, to continue the reduction of poverty and ensuring that we create wealth and create jobs in a sustainable um, economy. Dr. Gonzalez, thank you very much and congratulations once thank again. Thank you very much. All the best to you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank that was Leslie and Johnson there speaking to Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. During his sit-in of the House of Parliament on Tuesday, Prime Minister Tillman Thomas took the opportunity to congratulate Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez on his victory at the polls. Yesterday, Mr. Speaker, was the general elections in St. Vincent, and I really want to congratulate Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez on his victory. We are part of the OECS, also part of the CARICOM, and we all share similar institutions. So I want to really extend uh, congratulate him on his victory at the polls. 
Meanwhile, the general feeling is that the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines are relieved that a particular mode of progress will continue under the Gonzales administration. The results went in favor of Prime Minister Ralph Gonzales and his Unity Labour Party, who won eight seats in the general elections. Vincentian community educator Nelsia Robinson says it was a bit chaotic a year leading up to the elections and there is a need now to heal the divisions caused by politics. She believed that Dr. Gonzales near defeat is not because of neglected people but his philosophies. Dr. Gonzalez has been quite bold in terms of his foreign policy. He has uh, built up a lot of alliances with people like the president of Venezuela. He's gone into Libya in terms of funding. He's gone into Iran. He's opened up areas for education in places like Mexico headed to unknown areas in terms of development and because of the, the outlook and the philosophy of many of these countries, it is perceived that uh, this is the way that St. Vincent would go. So we have a lot of, of that fear and uh, the election propaganda was geared very much towards that. I do not think it has anything to do with his economic policies in the sense of reaching people on the ground and there would therefore be a need to allay the fears of people. Mrs. Robinson says the opposition was confident that it would have secured a victory at the polls because of the failure of government to succeed with the referendum. From opposition quarters it would have been said that the airport project for example would not be continued. It was seen as a, a project that was a phantom project and uh, the majority of people on the ground would like to see an international airport or people in the diaspora would have liked to see that. So it was at the very last minute that the opposition did say that the project had gone too far and that they would begin to work on it if they, if they gain power. There are certain other very progressive actions that the government intends to undertake apart from the projects already completed and there are those who would really like to see those completed. Community educator in St. Vincent, Nelsia Robinson. Civil society organizations are getting a lesson in policy writing to better represent the people to whom they serve. On Monday, a workshop started at the Public Workers Union building in St. George's for representatives of the various organizations. It will conclude on Wednesday, December 15. Vincentian community educator Nelsia Robinson was sent here by the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to carry out the training. As it stands, St. Vincent just produced a draft revised constitution for the first time in decades. Mrs. Robinson played an integral role in that process. From her experience, she says the workshop will equip participants to better write policy documents that will create positive change for the development of the people and the nation on a whole. We are looking at leadership and leadership for what? Looking at what are the, the issues. For example, one of the big issues has to do with the rise in crime in the region. Good. You know, so we look at issues. How can our organizations develop and use our leadership skills that we could advocate you know against crime how can we influence policy what is it that we want within our our constitutions what do we want our uh, our representatives uh, to do and the discussion is uh, flowing very well because within the room there are people with very good skills and knowledge so as i was saying before it is uh, pulling that out honing that, showing people how they can now use these skills in different ways. Mrs. Robinson says it's also important for women to play a bigger role in the decision-making process at a national level through the political process. There would be a tendency to look at people's character in a very degrading manner okay. and you know to dig up things about their moral life, for example. And somehow they tend to, they tend to attack women much more then they will refer to what they may see as indiscretions. They would bring that out against women. I think a lot of women are afraid of the, the smut okay. that takes place. On the other hand, I think that women need to be more prepared. It's not that they don't have skills at uh, different levels, but they need to be more prepared for what is parliament and what is parliamentary procedure. And perhaps some of that training should happen. 
turning to regional news, costs will increase again to travel to the Caribbean from Britain. It is going to be a little bit more expensive to fly to the Caribbean from Britain as British Airways will increase its fuel surcharge on long-haul flights by 16 U.S. dollars. From Thursday, passengers will pay a surcharge of between 100 to 170 U.S. dollars depending on which cabin they are in and how long the flight is. BE said the rise reflects the substantial recent increase in the price of oil. The Cuban government is undertaking a project that will show its version of the world and history. On a Tuesday, an online encyclopedia similar to Wikipedia will be launched by the Spanish-speaking government. It is already up and running with about 20,000 entries on www.ecured.cu. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back. Sports is next. Welcome back, viewers. Thank you, Trevor, with this evening sports segment. Before we go, here's a recap of the stories making the headline. House of Representatives recommends financial services cooperatives and commercial type cooperatives be regulated by separate registrars. Vincentian Prime Minister speaks of major priorities following his third consecutive victory at the polls. And major road linking nine communities in Karakou to be opened next week. On behalf of the entire team here at the Government Information Service, all those making this production possible, I am Abigail McIntyre. Thank you for joining us.